Maximiliano Romero was once a promising footballer and a fantastic wonder kid on Football Manager. As for back as FM16, you could get the then 16 year old from Velez for a 1.1 million compensation fee. He'd be able to develop into a world class player, and that promise? reflected into reality. Despite suffering a knee cruciate ligament injury in 2015, he was able to recover, make his debut for Velez, and score on his second appearance. By late 2017, PSV Eidenhoven would buy him for 10.5 million euros, but minutes were sporadic. After a loan to Velez in 2019 and 2020, he'd return to his parent club. Sadly, in September of 2020, he would get yet another knee injury that sidelined him for almost a year. That campaign had to make a single appearance in the league that lasted for for a minute. Some loans in Argentina followed, and in our universe, one appearance in the 2023-24 campaign for PSV. That's a lot of damage! When that concluded, his contract was up, and the future was outside of Eidenhoven. Willem Tway gave him a contract offer to play in the second division. Van Krumen offered more money, and he joined Go Ahead Eagles. Rebounding from second season syndrome was key for Go Ahead. Finishing 10th place was respectable, but after nearly having a taste of European football, that would be the goal for this upcoming season. With the introduction of Romero and free agent transfer of Kalechi and Vakali, Krubin opted to finally use his preferred 3-4-1-2 tactic. Getting a cam was crucial, and ever since Krubin watched a YouTube video about Nigeria's trio from the 2015 U17 World Cup, he felt honored to have that tournament's MVP. Yet, things weren't clicking. Romero was struggling, and the defense was being leaky. Even with free transfers of center back Jete from Ablachete and goalkeeper Patrick Calgren from Randers, Super Mario Dorgelis also returned to continue learning his trade at left wing back. With only one clean sheet in the first five matches, added with Feyenoord, PSV, and Ajax in the following five fixtures, it wasn't looking promising. Did Krumen keep Mulder as a backup keeper? No. He didn't sign one, and had to use Spikerman for these games. I would suggest you don't know anything about anything. Quite the baptism of fire if I do say so myself. First up is Feyenoord, the club who finished in third last season and were Europa League semi-finalists, eliminated by Tottenham due to an 80th minute Bentoncour goal, where they lost the final to Everton. Tottenham story is this. Now returning to the fixture with go-ahead, Spikerman wasn't going to have an easy time if Emil Forsberg was going to do this. The defending was also out of sorts for their second. However, the shortest man in the opponent's box, Manfred Ogalde, was found to bring one back with a half hour to go. Then, about 10 minutes later, Ngom was tripped up as he entered the box. The ref pointed to the spot, and Romans was up to take it. Romans. At least he made it up to salvage the draw versus Utrecht, but he can score that? But not this? Van Nistelrooy and PSV were next, Romero's former club. And Atacanya was there once. Krumen decided to revert to the winger version of the tactic to see if it could make a difference. It didn't. Atacanya messed up a big chance soon after, but in the second half, Dario would find Romero in behind, and despite not enjoying big matches, he scored against his former club. That was also his first of the season. Was it finally a turning point for Go Ahead Eagles? No. PSV scored three goals in response, handing Krumen a 4-1-L. The team actually showed some confidence against Emin, but it took an 85th minute strike from Shalin in order to achieve a 1-0 victory. Wow, a clean sheet. Enjoy, because Ajax was next. Last year's Eredivisie winners, their manager Joachim Liu was insulted by the league's new rule of having to sanitize before shaking the opponent's hand. So he left for the Belgium national team, where sanitation is not needed. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey. Ajax in response got another German international coach. This time, the man who led Turkey to a Euro 2024 final. Stefan Kuhn. No, I'm, just, I'm saying Kuhn. No, Kuhn. Kuhn. Unfortunately, they lost to England, but his reputation was high, and Ajax went all in. In the match itself, despite Romero scoring a penalty, Ajax completely destroyed Go Ahead. A Burgess header, a Cometio mistake leading to a Tony Martinez finish, Davi Klassen getting a third, and bloody Harry Maguire scoring a penalty to absolutely insult Krumen. Ten match days played, and Go Ahead Eagles were in 12. It's clear to see that Krumen needed some tactical advice. So of course he would call yours truly any day now. I may have been gone for a moment, but I have been cooking. Realizing that several of the instructions made zero sense, Truman changed a few things, like pressing higher up the pitch. He also slightly changed the tactic to a 3-4-2-1, with a pressing forward up top, along with a shadow striker and an attacking midfielder in support. Okay, yes, it does look like a Christmas tree, but the results improved significantly. For the remainder of 2024, Go Ahead were undefeated in seven Eredivisie matches and two Dutch Cup fixtures. The attackers were beginning to do their job, whether it was Schaland or Romero. 
and Vikali and Dario were beginning to cook too. Plus, the defense actually kept clean sheets. Six to be exact, and the only blemish was a 1-1 draw away at Twente, who were very good in this adventure. Then, with Krumen finally defeating Kambur with goals from Fag and Walcott and Shaland, go ahead rose up to fifth place, only four points behind second. Still far back behind Ajax, but with them at home in the first Eredivisie match of the new year, it was the perfect time to use this tactic. After getting thumped by Ajax, Go Ahead rebounded well. A lone and Vakali goal versus FC Emin was nice. The absolute destruction of Hirenveen was even nicer. A 5 0 victory, which included a Romero brace. The 3 4 2 1 era of Go Ahead was looking great, but it was never going to be perfect. Despite Shallon scoring in both fixtures, two away losses arrived with Kroonigan and Vitesse. Sometimes you're not at your best, especially in away games. A Valvik home win in between at least didn't make the first half of March a disaster. Unfortunately, the team still dropped into 6th, outside the official European places. However, the following 4 fixtures would determine whether Go Ahead were for real. Twente and PSV at home, followed by Utrecht and Feyenoord away. Being realistic, Krumen thought 7 points would keep them in the race. It wasn't going to be easy. But life never is for a guy who decides to wear this ridiculous suit. One day we're becoming a mainstay with the elite, but after a second place finish, their manager Ron Jans retired. Beijing manager Stanley Menzo took over. The former Ajax keeper continued where the former left off. However, Go Ahead was looking like the better team. All squared at the interval, but immediately following, Dalrio was able to find Lindhorst for the lead. With only two shots in the match, it would take something special for Twente to get back into it. The lead would come back with an Idzes header delivered by Scott Guest, a man bought for 2.5k from Scotland. While he hasn't really developed since arriving, the 5'2 man who was balled at 19 would also find Ugalde to make it 3-1. Three points gained. And now, it was PSV next. With them right above on the table, the result of Van Nistelrooy's side could determine so much. <laughs> Terrible start 8 minutes in, but luck would be with Go Ahead just after half an hour. A failed clearance was swept up by Romero, scoring once again versus his former team. Then at the start of the second, Dalrio delivered a corner to the back post where Fag and Walcott scored a header to give Go Ahead the lead. That excitement increased as 6 minutes following, Lindhorst found in Macaulay in rooms of space and he increased the lead. PSV were down and out, as an added time, Dalrio scored not just one, but two finishes to completely humiliate them and level the club on points only behind on goal difference. Six of the seven desired points were already achieved and with a 2-0 lead late versus Utrecht, everything seemed perfect for go ahead. Too perfect. That's because Utrecht weren't bad and Alan Medina got one back in the 86th. The substitutions prior didn't really help the defense or match the intensity of those replaced. That led to Medina finding acres of space to equalize in the 92nd minute. Despite it not being a bad draw, the context makes it suck. Still, the 7 points were achieved, so anything against Feyenoord would be fantastic. They beat Go Ahead in the Dutch Cup a month prior. On to the task at hand, it was a similarly close match. Van Beek's shot was the best in the first half, but after the break, a corner kick arrived for the away team. Krumen saw this as the perfect opportunity for his corner kick routine. Dalrio with the corner, back post to Lindhorst, up to the top of the box to Kuipers. Kuipers now goes to the goes wide, and Jete heads it in. Feyenoord weren't having the best day in front of the net, but their pressure would be rewarded in the last 10 minutes. Thanks to Kuipers just missing the ball. Also, it sure as hell didn't look on side. Unless if you look at it in 2D, which the bar room must have done. Huh, so maybe that's why there's so many bad bar calls. Despite the annoyance, it's a good draw. The team remained in 6th, but still within an arm's reach of a European place. With Go Ahead Eagles defeating Sparta Rotterdam 1-0 thanks to a shot on goal, and PSV losing to Twente 1-0, Go Ahead hopped into 5th. One point behind AZ. They were the next opponents. In front of the home crowd, Go Ahead began with a Shaland half volley. An incredible ball by Dario temporarily put the Eagles into fourth. The match went by with not a lot happening from AZ, although that changed about 15 minutes into the second half. Dominguez got past the defenders and chipped Patrick Calgary. The game stayed tight and the scoreline would remain. Points shared and no change in the table, with PSV also dropping points to Vitesse. Five matches remain, and the three clubs competing for fourth all had simple games on paper. Go ahead at FC Eidenhoven, and it was simple for them, going 3-0 up within half an hour.
don't worry. Darío would find his brace, Sean his hat trick, and Invercaulli adding one too, winning 6 to 3. AZ also won, but PSV drew FC Volendam. The club, Krumen's men, faced next. The thought was that PSV were in bad form. The reality is that Volendam were catching their opponents by surprise. An Invercaulli goal was not enough, as three massive points were dropped. The good news was that PSV were actually crap as they lost to Peg Zwolle. The bad news was that AZ won and now had a 4 point advantage. Now normally, there would be 5 European places before the playoff. However, in the Dutch Cup semi-final, Feyenoord lost to Kroenigen while Ajax lost to Emmen. Those winners finished outside the top 9, meaning they couldn't qualify for European football through the league. On the other hand, the winner of the Dutch Cup automatically qualifies for the Europa League proper instead of 4th. That means the final European spot outside of the playoff goes to 4th place. All Go Ahead could worry about was winning their final 3 games and hope things elsewhere would work out. SC Kambor away was 1st. This was relatively simple with Maximiliano Romero scoring in the 2nd minute and the backline keeping things safe for the rest of the fixture. PSV drawing Hirenveen made them irrelevant in this discussion, and AZ vs Eidenhoven saw all blanks. A boost for fourth with two points being the gap. AZ needed to draw at least one of their last two fixtures, but it wasn't going to be against Kambur. Go ahead on the other hand, had to face their fierce, but worse at football rivals Peg Zwolle. Today is not the day to talk about the newly promoted side in the derby history between the two clubs, but what will be mentioned is the lone goal scored by Enva Kali. The strike prior to the half was enough to keep up. So. It was time for the final day of the season. Go ahead had Almeri City at home, who were already relegated, while AZ were visited by Hirenbeen. But could they help Krumen out? Well, Go ahead couldn't worry about that, as Almeri were being difficult to break down. And when they were, Romero missed this chance. The team was getting close, and in the 64th minute, Ugali secured a 2 0 victory, while in Alkmaar. Mariani's finish gave Hirenveen the win and sent go ahead Eagles to Europe. Maybe Europa Conference League third round qualifying thanks to Ajax and Feyenoord fumbling the Dutch Cup, but an astounding achievement for Krumen. While in the European playoff, Hirenveen would also defeat PSV, kicking them out of Europe for the first time since 2017. Van Nistelrooy was sacked, and all was right in the world. Unfortunately for Hirenveen, all the dramatics led to absolutely nothing as AZ beat them in the final. <laughs>